Hey guys, welcome back. So today we have a higher H A I E R freestanding wine cooler. Uh, doesn't work. That's why it's here. My brother-in-law gave this to me to see if I can figure out what's going on with it. It's a model number H is in Harry, V is in Victor, T is in Tom, S is in Sam, M is in Mary, 18, D is in David, A is in Alpha, B is in Barbara, B is in Barbara. So this one's a bit unusual. Not that it doesn't work, because they rarely work, um, in that how it cools. So this one does not have a traditional uh, refrigeration system. And what do I mean by that? So instead of having a compressor and having refrigerant and pumping it around and having an evaporator coil and a condensing coil and all that nonsense, this one uses a thermoelectric cooler. Uh, I believe it's a either a Peltier or variation of a Peltier cooling device. I remember back in the 90s I had one of these as a uh, CPU cooler on a computer, but apparently they put them in wine fridges now. So let's plug it in and see what's going on and see if we can fix it. Now what's super awesome about this one is it's really reflective. So anytime uh, I walk near it, you're going to get to see me in my camera setup. So let's plug her in. Got a retractable cord here. Contact. Okay, so it's beeping. And the display is flashing some goofy codes. Let's see if we can get you over here and look at them. Ignore the tripod, but these numbers are, I don't know, it says ER, E-R. Yeah, I don't know. What is that saying? Yeah, it's still beeping like crazy. And it's just flashing. What is it flashing? I can't even tell. Is anything happening? I hear some weird noises coming out the back. I don't see any obvious signs of life from the cooling fans, at least not the one on top. Let's take this back cover off. I unplugged it, now I'm going to take the 97,000 screws that seem to hold it on. Oops, parts are falling off. It's always a good sign. Oh, forgot one. Hmm. So first I'm gonna do a quick fan seems to spin. Doesn't mean it's good though. Just doing a quick visual inspection. Do I see any obvious problems with it? Any blown up capacitors or anything like that? So I'm guessing up at the top here, let's get some light in here. There we go. So here we have incoming power. And it looks like there's a, a toroid of some kind that maybe cleans up the incoming power. And then we have two cables. One coming up to this board here. There's a blown capacitor right there. I can feel it. And then we have another cable going down here to what looks like a clone of the exact same board. 
I don't see any obvious problems with it. The one down below, but this one definitely has a blown capacitor, without a doubt. Let's um, clean off these cooling fans and just see what kind of shape things are in. I hit them with some compressed air. Yum. All right, now that we got everything clean and dust everywhere, let's just go over how I test for bad capacitors. Now, you can do an electrical test, which is probably the best way to do it, but you can do a visual test too. So on the back of the capacitor, what is a capacitor exactly? Let's get you down to this lower control board. Maybe about there. So this is a capacitor, this is a capacitor, this is a capacitor, and there's even little tiny ones down here. So a capacitor is, Think of it like a battery, right? But it's not a battery. It's designed to store an electrical charge for a very short period of time. They're used typically for filtering. Um, so if you have a noisy electrical signal, a capacitor can help kind of buffer that out and clean it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so what I do when I do a, a test for a bad capacitor, see these little indentations on the cap? This cap should be perfectly flat. Perfectly flat, it is. That one's perfectly flat too. You also want to look for signs of leakage at the base, like where the, the capacitor uh, sol is soldered to the board. You don't want to see any leakage there. So just eyeballing this one, I don't see any obvious problems. I'm even checking the small ones. Touching it with my finger, with it unplugged obviously. Don't feel any bad capacitors. At least visually. Now the top one, it's a different story. So doing that same test, that's perfectly flat, that's flat. This one is bulging out, pretty obviously. So you can't see it on the camera, but it's definitely bad. Just touching some of the remaining ones. They all seem okay as well. So, uh-oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Got to edit that part out. Definitely have a bad capacitor. Is that the only problem? I don't know. Let's see if these fans come on. So I hear some noises coming out of this board, and this fan is not spinning. This one down here is. So this fan is trying to spin, but unsuccessfully. So next step is to unplug it. We'll uh, take that board out, and I'll see if I have a capacitor that fits that. Four screws at either corner. Make sure you drop a couple screws too, that's pretty important. Now our bad capacitor is polarized, and you can tell, get you a little closer. You can tell by that band right there. That's the negative side. And this capacitor is, looks like 200, and, oh wait, 2200 microfarad, 16 volt. That's kind of an odd size. I don't know if I have that, if I have that one. Let me check. As luck would have it, I do have a 22 micro, 2200 microfarad capacitor, but in 25 volts instead of 16. So that should be okay though. The capacitor is a little bit physically bigger, uh, but I think we can make this work. So next step is to take the old or blown capacitor out. And for that, we're going to need a soldering iron. 
and access to the back of the board and a solder sucker. So I'm too lazy to unhook the board, so I'm going to try to do this midair. And uh, yeah, hopefully this I don't regret that. Down here I got my solder station right here and a solder sucker. And we're going to use that soldering station to loosen or I heat up the solder in the back of that capacitor, keeping uh, an eye on where the negative sign is on the cap. And we're just going to yank the capacitor out, put the new one in. All right, here goes nothing. I like to get a little bit of solder on the tip. This just seems to help with the thermal conductivity of the tip. Okay, so we got one leg out, or mostly out. There. There's the capacitor. I'll give you guys a close-up of that in a minute. Now, I'm going to take our solder sucker. As the air conditioner comes on. And we're just going to try to clean up this solder joint. Remove the excess solder. It's going to be tricky to give you guys a view of this, but I'll try. Ah, oh, damn it. That was hot. Jeez. Accidentally touched right there. Mmm. Okay, after having my hands in a finger in an ice bucket for a couple minutes, let's try that again. Got the capacitor soldered in. I think I forgot to hit the record button, but just a matter of pressing the capacitor firmly in place, make sure that minus sign is in the right direction. Don't reverse it. And then just uh, heat the part. Just get a little bit of solder on there. Just like that. And now we'll trim off the excess and the leads. So they're not sticking out. And uh, let's boot this thing up just like this and see if that improves things at all. Okay, I'm about to plug it back in. Got all the cables routed to the side of the fan. Nothing's shorting out. Let's see what happens. Ah, look, the fan's running. No beeps anymore. That may have solved our problem. Let's bolt the board back into place. I know what you're thinking. How many people actually have capacitors in stock, right? Yeah, well, I, I hear you. You may have to order one. If you do, you can get them from uh, many suppliers. DigiKey is a very popular one in the United States, as is uh, Mauser. There's a lot of them. So whichever supplier has what you need, just match the, mold, the voltage and the microfarad rating, and ideally the temperature, too. I didn't have that luxury only because... I was using what I had in stock. So what we'll do is we'll bolt this PCB back in, we'll turn it around, we'll see what the display says and see if it gets cool. That's ultimately what we care about, right? So why did this fail? I don't know. I know a long time ago, I think it was the early 2000s, there was a some kind of capacitor thing where the some ex-employee cloned, uh, did some poor cloning of a, a Japanese-made capacitor and flooded the market. There was a whole string of capacitor-related failures. Don't know if that's what's going on here. That bottom board is still fine, though. Let's uh, turn around and plug it in. There I am. I'm so pretty. Here we go. Oh, look at that. We have a display now. So now I'm guessing that those that capacitor that we replaced is probably responsible for providing power, not only to the fan, not power, but maybe stabilizing electricity coming in uh, for both the fan and also this display in the front. 
It could have been uh, part of the power supply circuit, didn't really get into it, but here's a, a close-up of the capacitor. Hopefully you can see how that top is not perfectly flat. This capacitor is definitely bad. So let's let this thing run for a bit and see what happens. It's been running for about half an hour. I'm not sure if you can see, but this side of this place is 56, 54. So it's coming down to temperature. It's working perfectly. So I think now it's time to button it back up. Maybe we'll just take one last peek at the back, make sure everything looks okay. So we got our bottom fan that's running. We got the lights on the LED on the board. That one, the green light went out. Actually, I take it back, that one doesn't have a green light either. It may have actually just satisfied and reached temperature. These fans might turn off in a second. Or maybe they just run all the time, who knows. Okay, I think they've both reached temperature because I see Looks like that fan's changing speed. I don't know if it's slowing down or what. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing. The LEDs are out on both boards though. I don't know, maybe just pulses these fans on and off all the time. You raise the temperature on both sides. So set the temperature to 60 on both sides. Seems kind of inefficient for it to run the fans all the time. That would explain how it got so dusty though. All right, let's unplug it, put it back together. Just want to see if the fans start up again. So we've got green light, red light on both boards. Fans are running on both boards. Full bore from the sound of it. Let's see what it does now. Still red light, green light, both boards. All right, well, that's interesting. On power failure, it, it completely forgets a set temperature, so that's not stored on non-volatile memory. That's just stored in active memory on the board. Kind of unfortunate, it has no memory. So we got green light, red light out, green light, red light out. All right, so we're good. Let's button it back together now. setting all the screws in lightly and I'll tighten them all down. All right, got everything back together and uh, she's running again. Gonna let her get down to temperature and probably let it sit here for a couple days before I give it back to my brother-in-law. Anyway, so if one of you guys has this wine fridge and you have that same issue where the display just kind of flickers and beeps and fl sometimes flashes an error code, check the capacitors on the boards, the thermoelectric boards in the back. They might have a bad capacitor like this one. So anyway, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe. Stay safe and thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.